In today's video, we will be going through the 2010 movie, The Occupant. It's time to recall! Let's get started. Turn on subtitles and spoilers ahead. The movie starts and we get to learn about our main character who is currently jobless. He goes for a job interview and introduces himself as Javier. After the interview, it turns out that he did not get the job and Javier makes his way back home disappointed. When he gets home, we see that he lives a luxurious lifestyle as he has a luxury car and a luxury apartment that give a view of the whole city. He says hello to his gardener and makes his way upstairs to give his wife the bad news. She is worried about their financial situation and goes on to suggest that they sell the car or the apartment because they are running out of savings and if he is unable to find a job for even a little more time, they are going to be out of money. She also tells him that they cannot afford the servants anymore either, so they have no choice but to fire them as well. He listens to her advice and goes on to sell his apartment right away and fires his maid as well. However, when he fires the maid, it does not sit well with her and she is pissed off. Javier still has no choice but to fire her, so he tells her to return the duplicate keys to the apartment, which she throws the key towards him angrily and they land on the floor of his luxury car. He does not make a big deal out of it and leaves. Javier, along with his family, now shifts into his new apartment, which of course is not as big as the previous one and is also very basic. Javier decides to do a course hoping that it will add up to his resume and he might get a good job after it. As the course goes on, he does not stop the job hunt and he keeps applying for any job that suits him. One day, he applies for a job and gets a call for an interview. The interview is conducted by two people named Dario and Lucas. It goes on for a while and they are impressed by his talent and on top of that, he has work experience in a similar field so they go on to hire him. Javier is both thrilled and relieved at finally having found a job, but when he reads the contract, he learns that the company is just hiring him as an intern. He learns that he is going to be working as an intern for the next six months, and during this time, he is not going to get paid at all. He gets frustrated and storms out of there. When he gets into his car, he comes across the keys thrown by the maid. He itches to visit his old apartment and drives to his old neighborhood. There, he waits until the new occupant leaves before making his way inside. Armed with the duplicate keys, he has no problem getting inside. He unlocks the door and quickly gets in so that no one sees him breaking in. Javier takes in the new look of the apartment and observes the family photos displayed in the house. He spends some time looking out the window and lounging on the sofa before returning home. The next day, however, Javier goes to visit his old apartment again. This time, though, he properly snoops around. He goes through bills and their call history. He also finds a rehab token. After that, he logs into the computer where he finds pictures of a car accident along with the occupant's injured wife and daughter. There is also information about the man's driving license being revoked. Lastly, he comes across the guy's entire schedule where he finds out where he goes and when. One day, he ends up at the same AA meeting that the new guy in the apartment goes to. There, as various people talk about themselves and their experiences, Javier also shares a made-up story. But the story he shares is deliberately tailored to catch Thomas's eye, who is the new occupant. Javier talks about how his drinking problem distanced his wife and daughter from him, and his wife ended up divorcing him. And sure enough, after the meeting ends, Tomas introduces himself to Javier, and the two of them go out to talk over drinks. By the end of that meeting, they're friends. Javier returns home to his wife, who asks him about coming home so late. Javier lies to her about his class getting extended and how they all went out to have drinks with the teacher later on. The next day, Javier unsurprisingly makes his way to Tomas' house and this time meddles with his online calendar by changing some scheduled tasks. He then ends up at the place where Tomas was supposed to pick his daughter up from her gymnastics class and witnesses an argument between Tomas and his wife. His wife is angry at him for being late to pick up Monica, their daughter. We know it's not Tomas's fault, but Laura obviously doesn't believe him when he tries to defend himself. Some days later, Javier ends up at the AA meeting yet again, and he and Tomas go out to drink once more. Tomas shares his life and shows Javier pictures of his wife and daughter. Javier responds by saying that he doesn't have any pictures of his family to show Tomas. Tomas also invites Javier to dinner at his house. The night of the dinner arrives and Javier goes to his old apartment again. While on his way upstairs, he runs into Damien, the gardener, who asks Javier what brought him there. Javier lies to him and says that he's there to pick up some bills and things which still get delivered to his old address. After that, he goes up and Tomas introduces his new friend to his family. Javier tells Monica that he's heard a lot about her and her gymnastics. Later, Javier has dinner with Tomas and Lara. The next day, when Tomas and Monica are leaving, they meet Damien, who gives Monica a pretty rose. He also makes small talk with Tomas about the previous owner dropping around to pick up some mail, but Tomas says no. 
Fabian apologizes for the mistake, but figures out that Javier had lied to him. We then see Javier, who deliberately crashes his car and calls Tomas to help him. When Tomas arrives, he sees a bottle of gin in Javier's hands and figures that Javier is badly drunk. When taking the bottle away from him, some of the alcohol spills onto Tomas' shirt. Tomas tries to console his new friend and make him see the dangers of drinking. He tells Javier how severely he is allergic to peanuts. If even a single peanut makes its way into his system, he could die. Drinking is similar to that peanut. Javier explains that his bad financial situation has him very stressed. Visiting Tomas' home the other day and seeing how well settled he is really made Javier distressed. Tomas tries to assure him that things aren't as peachy as they seem. He might be the vice president of a company, but that company is owned by his father-in-law, and no matter how hard he works, he's never going to be the owner. After listening to that, Javier tells Tomas that his phone's battery died and asks him to borrow his phone to call a tow truck for his car. Tomas generously gives up his phone, but Javier uses it to also send himself an email from Tomas's ID. Afterwards, as his car is being taken away, Javier asks Tomas not to tell anyone, including Lara, about the accident. In the next scene, Javier receives a call from none other than Damien, who tells him that he knows that Javier lied to him the other day. He hadn't come to pick up any bills, but he was there to meet Tomas. He asks Xavier to meet him. On the other hand, Lara finds Tomas' shirt with a spilt gin and confronts him, thinking that he has relapsed. Tomas assures her that he has done no such thing, and having no other choice, tells her about Javier and his drinking problem, and about the accident which Javier had gotten himself into. The next scene shows us Javier meeting up with Damien, who makes an unusual request of asking Javier to acquire one of Monica's used panties. Cornered, Javier agrees and brings him to Tomas' apartment to get the item. Unfortunately for him, Laura comes home unexpectedly, and Javier quickly hides. Coincidentally, Laura calls Javier at the exact moment, which makes Javier's phone vibrate. Javier changes his place of hiding, and Laura dismisses the sound of a vibrating phone as just her imagination. Javier successfully leaves the apartment unseen, and he and Laura end up meeting in a cafe. Laura tells Javier to stay away from Tomas. She says that Tomas had told her about Javier's accident, and since Javier drinks, she does not want Tomas to relapse into his drinking again. And so Javier changes his tactics. He tells Laura that he was not the one who was drinking, but Tomas. He then shows her the email he had sent himself from Tomas's email ID. The email asks Javier to come help Tomas, as he screwed up and not to tell Laura. This makes Laura go home and argue with Tomas. And so, Javier successfully creates further misunderstanding between the couple. At home, Javier receives a package which contains pepper spray and a bottle of peanut extract. He uses a syringe to add the peanut extract to the bottle of pepper spray. The rest of the things he gets rid of. Marga, Javier's wife, gets suspicious of him and decides to follow him one night when he is on his way to Tomas's house. However, Javier notices his wife behind him and asks the taxi driver to change course. Javier gets dropped off to pretend that he's here to attend classes for his course and goes to sit in the class. Marga follows him there and leaves after seeing him attending the lecture. The following day, Javier meets Damien to give him the child's underwear as requested. Damien goes on to make more requests, handing Javier a camera that he wants him to install in Monica's room. Javier doesn't say anything but realizes that Damien has become too much of a nuisance now and is dangerous to him. Javier decides to take care of Damien once and for all. He goes to his old apartment building and makes his way down to the basement. There he finds a cupboard with Damien's tools inside and messes with one of the machines. The next day, when Damien tries to start the leaf blower, we see oil leaking, and suddenly the machine catches fire in a small blast. The blast is big enough to set the man on fire, and so Damien is killed. In the next scene, Javier ends up in Tomas's office to meet him, but Tomas is understandably pissed at him for lying to Laura about the accident. He throws a good punch at Javier's face and beats him up. Javier then strategically goes to see Laura in his bloody state, telling her that Tomas attacked him because he suspects Javier to be having an affair with Laura. Laura is upset at her husband's behavior and apologizes to Javier as she patches him up. He tells Laura that Thomas's drinking problem is getting out of hand and quite dangerous, and that he is worried for her and Monica's safety. He hands Laura a pepper spray, which we know also contains peanut extract. The next scene shows Javier packing a suitcase and leaving Marga and his son behind, telling them that he will be back in a couple of days. He then makes a call to Lara, telling her that the gymnast championship is taking place in Barcelona, and he can take her and Monica to meet Monica's favorite gymnast. Lara agrees to this, and the three of them go to see the gymnast. Monica is ecstatic and extremely happy, which makes Lara happy as well. Afterwards, they pose for a picture together, and they appear to be one big happy family. Javier sends this picture to Tomas, who throws his phone in anger when seeing his place in the family being taken over by Javier. 
For the first time in months, he touches a bottle of alcohol. That night, Tomas watches Javier drop off Monica and Laura outside their apartment. Tomas is pretty intoxicated and goes inside to confront Laura. The two of them argue and get into a fight, where things turn physical, and Laura takes out the pepper spray given to her by Javier and uses it on Tomas. Tomas is very soon affected by the peanut extract apart from the burning of the pepper and falls to the ground. Laura watches in distress, watching Tomas breathe with difficulty until she can't feel his breath anymore. Laura panics and calls Javier, telling him what happened. Javier soon arrives at their house and tries to calm down and distress Laura. He tells her to wait in her room while he takes care of things. He walks over to where Tomas lies and notices that Tomas isn't dead yet. But watching the man who came into his life and stole everything away from him, Javier calmly bends down and covers Tomas's nose and mouth, strangling the poor man. The scene then shifts to some time later, where we see Javier driving a luxury car. He arrives in his office where he is clearly at a high post, and the man who interviewed him earlier in the movie, Dario, is now his employee. Javier has finally managed to get the high-class job he wanted. That day, he is visited by Marga, whom he divorced. Marga comes to tell him that the night he tampered with the pepper spray, she had found the bottle of peanut extract and wholly suspects Javier of wrongdoing. She says that she is going to take this information to the police, but Javier is not phased by any of this. He tells her how much power he has over her, how he can stop their son's tuition fee, take away their apartment, and if she goes to court, he can hire the best lawyer money can buy. Basically, no matter what she says, she cannot make a move against him unless she wants to ruin the life of their son along with her own. Marga is left speechless and disgusted. Later, we see Javier drive to his new home, which is a luxurious modern house. He parks the car and walks inside to be greeted by Laura, who is now his wife. Monica also comes rushing to greet her stepfather, and the three of them sit down to have a family dinner. The movie ends here, showing us how Javier ruthlessly removed Tomas from the family and took its place, regaining the kind of upper-class life that he desired ever since his financial troubles began. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.